Hello everyone, welcome to my long-awaited Notion tour. Thank you all for being so patient while I filmed this. It has been a very highly requested video for a while now and I'm so sorry for only getting around to it. But this video is very, very kindly sponsored by Notion themselves, which is so incredibly exciting. I've been using Notion for as long as I can remember since my uni days. And I think it has grown so much, especially now that I am working full time. This video will be all about how I use my Notion and how I decorate my pages, how I use it to organize my life. And I hope you guys can find some inspiration or motivation to start your own Notion and get organized as well. As someone with a 9-to-5 corporate job juggling YouTube and Instagram, I love to plan out my tasks and to-dos on a daily and weekly basis. So first things first, I land on my Notion homepage every time I open it. As you can see, it's full of Studio Ghibli GIFs that inspire me and make me very, very happy. On the left here, I have this really cute quote from Kiki's Delivery Service. It's such a relatable one and it's one of my favorites. Juggling YouTube and my 9-to-5 can be very hard sometimes, especially when it comes to finding inspiration for new content. And so I really relate to Kiki on this one. Over here, I've got my navigation pane with all of my pages. It pretty much represents all of the different compartments of my life. It's got a page for my content plan, my life admin, books, gardening, and also my house plans at the very bottom there. At the bottom here, I've got this progress bar that looks kind of like a game life bar, which I really like. It's super cute and it represents how far we are into the year, month, and week. I believe you can also change the colors of this bar, but I will leave a link to it below if you guys would like to try it out on your own Notion homepage as well. Now just going to the right hand side of this page here, I've got this really cozy Studio Ghibli Relax OST. It's got Kiki on the front page and I love playing this out loud whenever I land on my homepage. It just makes me feel all cozy and motivated to organize. And at the bottom here, I've got this Minonawa GIF. I love this moment in the film. And at the bottom there, I've got this really random, but also kind of cute and motivational message that I think will just put a smile on my face every single time I open it. So that's my homepage so far. If you guys can't already tell, I love using GIFs in my Notion, especially Studio Ghibli ones. I think they're such a great way to add some color and spark to your page. It's also one of the reasons why I am consistent with using Notion to organize my life. I always feel so excited and happy to plan as I am constantly surrounded by my favorite Ghibli moments. I'm always finding ways to elevate my mundane routine, so I try to do the same with my Notion page. And because you guys know I love Studio Ghibli, having them all over my page makes me feel all cozy and excited to get productive and start my week right. Next, I've got my content plan page and it's probably one of my most visited pages on my Notion. As you can see, it is full of GIFs once again. And Studio Ghibli is one of my main inspirations for content creating as I love the way the films do slow moving, peaceful and cozy content, which in essence is what I strive to do with my content as well. So on this page, I write down all of my important to-dos and tasks to prepare content, which includes shooting, editing, and submissions to clients. And it's pretty much my second brain for all things content plan, which includes Instagram and YouTube. So this content calendar I have on the left is the backbone of all of my sponsored content planning. Basically, it has a table view and a calendar view. The table view is where I add in all of the sponsored content that's scheduled. And just to be transparent, here are some of the sponsored content I have done so far. These days are very important to ensure that the client receives the content on time. This one calendar has kept me sane with juggling my 9 to 5 as I can plan on which nights after work I can finish my urgent YouTube related tasks. So let's do an example really quickly. Let's say I have a sponsored content due on the 23rd of April. What I love is that the table contents are synced with the calendar as well so you get a nice overview of how packed you are in a given month and it can help you gauge your capacity for creating future sponsored content as well. Over here, I've got a to-do table that goes with the sponsored content table. For example, knowing that I have a video due on the 10th of March, I will have to shoot content on the 2nd, 4th, and then edit on the 7th of March. The only time I get to do all of this is after work, and I reach home at about 6pm on average. And then I have dinner and chat with my sisters, then I clean up, and I am ready to work on content only at about 7pm at the earliest. My commutes to and from work are also about an hour each way, so I use that time to edit my YouTube videos on my 
phone, reply to comments, emails, and edit my Instagram photos. So far, I've been able to manage my time and meet deadlines this way. And on days where I have nothing scheduled, I use the time to read, plan, journal, catch up with my family and friends, garden, do chores, and also I try to sleep before 12 a.m. on weekdays for a 6.50 a.m. alarm. And I do go to church on Friday nights and all of Sunday pretty much. But as you can see, with proper planning and discipline, it can all work out. I can understand that this seems very full on and I am in no way trying to encourage everyone to do the same, but it's personally worked well for me and it's how I make time for everything. So organizing your life can be very powerful with enough discipline and consistency. Back to my page, on the right hand side here, I've just got some content ideas. They're a nice page filler and I love going back to them for some inspo. Whenever I have ideas that just pop up, I just like to key them in on here. Now we're going into my finances relating to content creation. This is where I record all of my YouTube and Instagram income for tax purposes. Honestly, I love to share with you guys my finances, like how sponsorships and AdSense work for YouTube. I personally enjoy watching videos like these because I am incredibly nosy. But also because I get asked this question a lot, so I think it'll help people if they are looking to monetize their content as well. Let me know what you guys think and I can make a whole separate video about getting monetized, brand deals, sponsorship collaborations, and all the nitty gritty details about creating content on YouTube and on Instagram. Up next, we have my live admin page, and at this point, you guys can already see a trend in the way I decorate all of my Notion pages. My format for every page is to have three GIFs at the top and then everything else at the bottom, like calendar, tables, and lists. I've got a cute and simple quote here and a no face icon. I love these spirited away icons, and I will leave a link to them below if you guys would like to use them as well. Similar to my previous page, I've got a calendar and table where I've added in all of the things I need to get done that aren't content related, like like laundry, getting groceries, meeting with people, and other general admin stuff. Again, you can see these tasks on your calendar which makes it really easy for you to plan your days ahead. Going to the right hand side of the page here, I have my goals and to buy lists. As you can see, I've got pretty big goals this year like buying a house and going through my marriage catechism. It's super easy to just take these things off or simply delete them and add new things to the list whenever I need to. I've just done a huge book buying spree so I'm hoping that I won't be spending my money on anything else on this list for now. I also have my grocery list here which I love. I update this whenever a grocery item pops to mind and it always happens when I'm on commutes in the bus and it's nice that I can just quickly add them in my Notion app on my phone. Or if I've got a recipe in mind, I just simply add them into the list here as well. At times, I also like to customize the colors on my page depending on my mood, and as you can see, it is super easy to do. My pages are actually very simple in essence with just to-do lists, some calendars, and some tables, but they look amazing, full, and maximal with all of the beautiful gifs that I have on my page. Now we have the bookish related page and it's got my favorite Shizuku and Seiji from the film Whisper of the Heart, which is one of my favorite films ever. On the top left here we have an icon of No Face sitting on top of a book which is so cute, and a bookish quote by Margaret Atwood at the bottom. Let's start with my 2024 reading log. It's fairly simple, effective, and efficient, all of which are key for me to stay consistent with updating this reading log. I just have columns for the book title, when I finish reading it, and my rating. Let's go through a really quick example of how I log my finished books. First, I type out the book title here. The Unmaking of Jin Farrow turned out to be one of my new favorite books ever, and I'm still thinking about it. Then I key in my finished date, and as you can see here, you can set the time as well, but it doesn't matter much to me, so I exclude it. And now, I select the rating of the book, which you can populate by typing it out and clicking enter. I'm giving Jun Farrow a 4 stars, even though I loved it, but it was pretty slow at the beginning, which is why I docked out 1 star. And so I continue to do this with all of my finished books. This has helped me tremendously with staying consistent with my reading journal as well. Knowing the books I've read and the ratings I've given them, it saves me from having to go to Goodreads to check on them. Now going to the right hand side of the page, I have my Discord book club picks of the month. What I normally do is write the month at the top and add an image of the book cover. And it appears like this. I think it's so cute and personal. 
Sometimes I like to type out my book reviews on here as well and it makes updating my reading journal so much faster because I can copy down what I've typed out and don't have to think of writing my review on the spot. So far, using Notion in conjunction with my reading journal has been super helpful. My structure is simple and straightforward, which is why it's helped me so much, and so I highly recommend it. Next, we have a page on all things gardening. This is where I do my planning for seed sowing, chores, to buys, and anything else needed to tend to my garden. I've used GIFs and photos related to nature and gardening, and I honestly love the variety in films here as well. We've got a similar format going on here except for this sewing calendar. It's organized from summer to spring and is a timeline of seeds to be sowed specifically for my region, which is Perth, Western Australia. The table tab is where you add your seeds and timeline or date, and you can see them in the synced timeline view. As you scroll to each month, the seeds you need to sow will show up together. You can also click on the arrows to jump to the start or end of the timeline. This will help me be prepared with my seeds and have enough time to prepare the right soil, space, and love needed to nurture them. We're in the middle of autumn here, but it's still pretty warm at the moment. But once it cools down a lot more, I've got so much planned for the garden. I also don't have much else going on in this page as I've just started to sow some seeds, but I'll definitely add more things under this page when my seedlings start to grow and harvest is close. So far, I've got pak choy, spinach, lettuce, cat mint, lavender, and a conish mix, but there will definitely be more things going on here, so stay tuned. Next, I've got this visual diary for our house, which is one of my biggest goals this year. I've got five sub pages here to help me with my house planning. The first one is a link to my budgeting spreadsheet with my finances and mortgage. And then I've got a sub page prepared for renovation ideas. Then I've got my vision board of office inspiration. Let's take a look what's inside here. So I've got these pictures from Pinterest and they're all honestly so beautiful. It is my dream to have a whole office space to myself in my new house. And I'm already brewing up some decor ideas with these inspiration photos. I'm thinking of a maximalist, vintage, cottagecore office space that I can always walk into and feel inspired to create in. I'm so excited. Then I've got this meal prep page too for some lunch ideas to bring to work. This is going to be a very important page because my meals revolve around my lifestyle, which will change a lot when I move into a new place. Lastly, I've got my garden vision board, which is pretty empty for now, but it will surely grow. I would love to make an edible garden in my future home. It will be full of colorful flowers, edible greens, fruit trees, maybe an archway decorated with squash leaves and a reading area. That will be the dream, and I know that it can be achieved with enough discipline and consistency. Back to the main page, I've got a to-do list and a table for all the things I'm already planning on getting from my future home. I already know this table is going to be massive, so I've also listed out the place I'll be getting them from, which will be very convenient for future me to go back to. Sometimes things just pop up on random sites and you think, oh, I might not need that now, but maybe later when I have more space. So this table is what that's for. Now I'm adding a total cost function to estimate how much I'll need to save up to be able to afford whatever's listed in here. I love to play around with numbers and think up scenarios to gauge whether or not they're realistic for me, as it makes me work towards my goals better. So far, I'm looking at having to save up around $5,000 for decor furniture, and other miscellaneous items. I love crunching numbers and it makes me feel in control of my finances, and I love how Notion makes it super accessible for me. I hope you all enjoyed this personal Notion tour. More importantly, I hope this inspires you to plan and reach for your goals as well. Genuinely, Notion has been so crucial in helping me reach mine. You don't have to have fancy gifs and decorations like me. All you need is a to-do list and some ideas, and you can just start from there. I love that I can be inspired every single day to reach for my goals. It is never too late to start your own business, go to uni, start a book club, and what better way to do this than to have fun with your ideas along the way. You can sign up to Notion for free using the link in my bio, and use my templates also linked below to get started with your Notion boards. Thank you once again to Notion for this incredible partnership. I am so incredibly grateful to be able to work with a brand that I love, and this is only possible because of you guys, so thank you all so much. And thank you all for sticking till the end of this video. I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye for now.